when you look at marketing, it's actually a skill. It is a science. Marketing is about understanding society. It's about understanding people. It's about having the ability to sift through data, to sift through behavior and trends, to identify unmet needs. Unmet needs could be physical products, could be services, right? They could, it could be a whole spectrum, yeah? I'm very sure someone will try and start selling purified oxygen very soon in a bottle that you have to carry around. If you think back on the water industry, there's a big documentary, by the way, on Netflix that you should watch. Why do we drink so much branded water? Any guesses? They've created a? A narrative. What's that narrative? Yeah, but there's water everywhere. They don't have to, they don't have to be branded bottled water. It's safer. Uh huh. It's approved by who? Kebs. Well, that again is another marketing Africa session. But uh -huh. <laughs> it's approved. It's safe. Basically, You're, there's some guarantees of quality. There's a notion, a perception, right? Perception is reality, correct or wrong? So I always tell all marketers who tell me, there's nothing wrong with our beer, it is just the consumer perception. The consumer is always, if the consumer thinks there's something wrong with your beer, there is something wrong with your beer. Find a way to fix either the perception or the beer itself, what is causing the issue. Okay? If you look at marketing and you start at identifying unmet needs, it is something that not a lot of business people do. I love Kenyans, by the way. I think we are special. We were called peculiar. If one Kenyan finds out that a cyber cafe makes money, what does every other Kenyan do? When one person takes and goes and takes their retirement money and buys a matatu, we all... Does anyone remember Quilex? Right? Now, the reason I'm talking about that is that is not marketing. That is not purpose-driven. If you look at the other side of this slide, Marketing is not the art of finding clever ways to dispose of what you make. Can I hear an amen? With the common bog off as the solution to all the world's rate of sale problems. That does not work. It's not sustainable, is it? Yeah. These days when you go and find a promotion, what's the first thing you say? In I expire. Right? Good. So marketing is about, it's a science. It's about delivering actual value. But for you to deliver the value, you have to begin by understanding your, you can't understand your consumer before you understand yourself. Yep. I will speak about companies, corporates, purpose, and brands as individuals, because I find it easier for you to understand. You must begin by understanding yourself as a corporate, who you are. What are your values? You know those boring things that we put on walls and no one reads? Your mission statement and such things. They are actually important because they determine your tonality. They determine your tone of voice. You understand yourself. And then you look out into the world and you find people who might be interested in you. Let's pretend this is dating because now you, it's a Friday afternoon. You might understand that one faster. Okay? So if you're a brand or a product. You start by understanding yourself. Now, if you are dating, does everyone date everyone? Why? <laughs> At in Nairobi, that is not what dating is. <laughs> that has another name. We'll ask Ben Sol and Viri, but that is not what dating is. I, I mean the serious one that might lead to marriage. <laughs> Um, because you have to find areas of commonality, isn't it? 
joint interests, yeah? So you are this brand, you're all about this. Maybe you have one brand that is fun, vibrant. You have another brand that is conservative, serious, and caring. You, you know, you can be anything, isn't it? And whatever you are and whoever you decide you are, you'll always find somebody who feels you. Okay? Somebody who feels you, connects with you. Yeah? And that is where you understand. Once you find that person who feels you, you can start to find out what are their unmet needs. What do they have? What don't they have that they're looking for that you could have to offer? And that's the beginning of building purpose. Okay? I love, absolutely love Elliot Kipchoge. You know, he called me the other day. So my friend Elliot, see, I can be a Kenyan sometimes. Um, and the reason why I love his story, uh, which I don't think we really go back and read, is he has crafted such a powerful personal purpose. And you know, when we say no human is limited, I'm not sure we really dig deep to understand what it means. If you go back to his story, I mean, he was born in a lot of poverty. Um, if I'm not wrong, his father passed on. He really struggled to get to where he is. And he decided to use his gift. Everyone has a gift, by the way, right? He used his gift. And he realized his gift makes him unstoppable. Correct? His personality is strong, powerful, and passionate. And he decided to make himself unstoppable. Yeah? So when you say no human is limited, do you understand what Elliot means? Do you? Or you just wait to clap after 159? <laughs> Why would a human being challenge themselves to run a marathon under two hours? Why? I guess the question back to you is what are you challenging yourself to do? More importantly, for your, the brands that you run and the companies that you run, what is your 159? How are you changing the world? And that is why purpose is important because it is the reason brands, products, companies exist. And this is where the kicker is. We should have invited the finance people to this session. Beyond making money. Beyond making money. The reason that something exists beyond making money, that is, that is purpose. When I look at Elliot's journey, and I might be simplistic, I'm sure he's making money now, right? For him to appear in any marathon, he's paid top dollar. He's possibly one of the highest paid for appearances, isn't it? We try to negotiate for him for endorsement. I mean, he is earned it, right? But he didn't start by making the money. He started by building and clarifying his purpose. So one thing that you've been hearing me consistently speak about is who are you? Who are you as a person? Who are you as a corporate? Who are you as a brand? It's fundamentally important for people, brands, corporates looking for success to really invest in understanding who they are. And I think it's one place where we don't invest enough, right? We usually run very fast to copy the innovation that someone else made, yeah? And start selling it at half the price without asking ourselves who we are. After you ask yourself who we are, I mean, the first thing you have to ask is what do your customers believe in? You identify your customers, you find out what they believe in. The intersection, whoever knew you would use Venn diagrams for something? You know, that when you go to <laughs> school and you wonder when you're ever going to use that information. The intersection in the Venn diagram is where purpose exists. Where what you stand for, who you are, overlaps with what your consumers, customers stand for and what they're looking for. And if you don't understand that, always remember dating. Correct? Would you date somebody who you don't share a value system with? And I don't mean Nairobi dating. Right? Okay, let me be, I should call it marriage, not dating. Would you spend the rest of your life with somebody who you don't share something with? Interests with? Somebody who doesn't add value to you? Please always look at the relationship between 
yourself, your brands, your corporate, and its customers in that way. Because for you to have purpose, you must deliver value. For you to deliver value, you must understand who you are and you must connect to who your customers are. I've picked three examples of brands that live purpose, that have clear purpose. And whenever we speak purpose, people think that there needs to be a lot of jargon, mambo jumbo. No, it can actually be very simple. Right? Purpose can be very simple. I was very surprised to read Google's purpose. I thought it would be more technologically complex than that. They just want to organize data and make it useful. That's it. Would you say Google are living their purpose? Yeah? They started with search, right? Do you remember the days of GPS? Okay, in Kenya it wasn't GPS. It was enda kwa ile kona, angalia iyo ngombe, alafu. Do you remember trying to find someone before send me, drop me a pin? Right? So data is not just files and folders and Wikipedia. They've collected all this geographical data and are they making it useful across the world? I know there are a lot of privacy data issues with Google, but that's a conversation for another day. One of my favorite brands is Nike. Um, and Nike basically wants to empower everyone to be an athlete. And when you wear a Nike, you feel like you can run like Elliot, right? Kwanzaa, if you buy the, they're called vapor flies. Until some guys bought them and realized they still can't run. But the power of Nike is that they make you feel that you can be at your best. You feel like when you're exercising in Nike, you're better than the other guy, Cindy. Right? They have a clear purpose. They communicate it consistently. If you look at their advertisements, if you look at their positioning, it's very clear. One brand that fascinates me always is Apple. To make digital life simpler, do you remember the edges of the QRT phone? Right? Okay, I won't start with where me, I started with telephones. Ah, it used to be those ones which you could tap like this. See, many of the audience here are very young, yeah? The one which you go around when you dial. And it only had numbers. But then now, we went to the whole digital era. We had all these mobile phones. My first phone was a Siemens C25. Does anyone remember that phone? I was in campus. My sisters were working. My God, I was the funkiest chick with that phone. Please Google it. It used to have another thing that used to do like this when you call. And there had to be three letters in one button. When Apple started with a smartphone, did anyone know where they were going? What has happened today? With the, not the smartphone, the touch screen. They're the ones who came up with it, right? What happened to companies like um, BlackBerry? Do you guys remember BlackBerry? Huh? BlackBerry had cornered uh, the world of corporate business and email and security. And then they refused to do what? Move. Let's talk about Nokia. So you see, if Apple's purpose was to make the fastest smartphone, if that's what they decided they wanted to do, or the most expensive one, would they have pushed themselves so hard to innovate and make it simple and be consistent? Yeah? And that's the power of purpose. Now is where we should have invited the finance people. All those brands that you've seen displayed there command premium value. True? Even when guys are the most broke, you would rather buy a second-hand pair of Nikes than go to butter and buy a new pair of powers. Correct? So, same sneaker can get to 10 times as much value. Why? It's because the minute that tick is put on there, in your mind you process the purpose. You've connected with Nike. They've made you aspire to it. Of course, it also gives you status. You believe you can run as fast as Elude, and you will pay 10 times more. 
But it has taken Nike a lot of time since 1975 to not only build their purpose, but to actually bring it to life. So if you have a resonant purpose, and I wrote resonant on purpose, pun intended, right? Because it must connect. Then of course you have to have well-crafted products. You can have a resonant purpose and bad products and it still doesn't matter. Because someone needs to want what you're offering. Then we go into strategic marketing, which is putting it out there in a way that consumers, customers can understand. If this is done well, you command premium value. Now, I wanted us to look at a few examples of how this comes to life. Equity Bank is one of the most amazing brands, if you ask me, in today's world. See, when I was, how old was I? I my age is already all over the paper, so it's fine. 20 years ago, if I'm not wrong, could be slightly more, could be about 25 years ago, actually. Do you remember what Barclays and Standard Chartered were doing? Does anyone remember? Well, it meant the young guys. Yeah? First, to open an account, you had to go and get a letter from your ancestor. And uh, yeah, you had to come and prove, remove blood and give them a tube to prove you're human. You had to have a, a bank balance, if I'm not wrong, of 5,000 or 10,000. In, that was 25 years ago. They used to tell you, you can't withdraw below. It was 10,000, right? Yeah? Minimum bank balance. And then they never used to like guys who look rough, rough. Me, I could have entered, yeah? I don't know about you guys. Okay, I can enter today. You should see me on Saturday. But... After all of that, in a bid to make their business, because banks were booming, banks have made money for a very long time. What did they do? They started closing branches. And they started telling people to go away. True? And then these guys in equity asked, wait a minute, what is going on here? Equity was a small building society, isn't it? If you look at equity's purpose, it is transforming lives. Interesting that you would put a purpose on giving dignity. Giving dignity is central to equity bank's ethos. And then expanding opportunities. Yeah? You could have written that in a room, isn't it? Couldn't you have? If you were watching at the time, you could have, but you didn't. But the rich guys at Equity did. And what they did was then do what we call banking there, unbankable. Completely crushed. There was no, you didn't need to have a bank balance. You could just walk in. Actually, did you know that Equity in choosing the color brown? So in marketing, you look at colors. Color red means? Power. Whenever you have a brand that's branded red, usually it, it is co denoted as the mind processes it as a powerful brand. Green is fertile and lush, you know. Brown tends to be down to earth and caring. So if you look at brands, just take a look at brands across, and maybe you'll see some theme. Did you know that Equity Bank chose the colors of their the colors in their branches to deliberately make your mamamboga, your muturacela feel comfortable. Because when they walked into the bank and they tracked their mud on the floor, it didn't get seen. Yeah? So they've taken their purpose and lived it to the last final detail, right? I read, I looked at this ad, I don't even want to say, De gui na de mumeba. This is actual communication that was run as part of the Mimi Ni Member campaign. Where they were welcoming everybody to walk into Equity Bank because they are welcome. They are home. 
One of the other things um, that Equity has done for very many years is the Wings to Fly program. Many people would look at the Wings to Fly program and think that it's a waste of money, isn't it? Why isn't it a waste of money? You know Equity Bank are building their next customers for the next 50 years. Correct? They are very clear. They are doing a good thing. They are taking care of the society in which they operate. And it's very powerful when you connect at a very basic level with the society in which you operate. It gives you a license to make money. It gives you a license to be profitable. If I'm not wrong, Equity Bank charges are some of the higher ones from a banking perspective. They do command a premium. But aren't they one? I think they're the largest bank now, at least in bank network. I saw the other day, fifth most strongest banking brand in the world, probably one of the fastest growing. Correct? Because when everybody zigged and said, we don't care about you, equity identified an unmet need, crafted a powerful purpose, and unashamedly brought it to life in every single thing. From, it's only recently that you're finding equity opening in Upper Hill and other such places. They were the first people to go to slum areas, unreachable areas, yeah? Getting people to interact with them. Purpose is powerful. Purpose is good for business. It is good business. Dove is one of the brands I absolutely love. And the reason I put Dove here as one of the, the, the case studies I wanted to, us to look at is if you look consistently now, equity and then Dove, what was traditional beauty telling us? You have to be perfect, right? Not even perfect. Actually, a lot of models even started getting anorexic, sick, because there was a, a certain size, 36, I think Kanye West sang about it, 36, 24, yeah? Look for the song, it's old, like me. Um, because there was a perfect inch size for your bust, your waist, your hips, for you to be beautiful. You had to have flawless skin. You had to have pouty lips, right? And then entered the age of the calves. So Dove came and said, wait a minute, beauty is important. But it should not cause anxiety. You can be beautiful just the way. Not you can be, you are beautiful just the way you are. And Dove then went on a campaign where they used real women to sell beauty. Yeah? This campaign has been a marketing case study e for years and years, and I still don't know if there's any other brand that has been able to transform an industry at, at a global level with such an impact. Their purpose is to create a world where beauty is a source of confidence and not anxiety. When you look at the Dove brand in the US, they're leading in most retail stores, right? So those statistics are a bit old, but they're still quite big. And this has been going for them for very many years. The other thing about purpose, it is authentic, and it's not necessarily what is popular at the time. Purpose is meaningful. It can get to be popular, but usually where it starts the transformation, it goes the opposite of what everyone else is doing. Has anyone kept in touch with Burger King and their ads? I know they're not very big in Kenya, but Burger King is having a serious run, very successful run from a marketing campaign perspective. So we know the whole food industry, what's going on with, you know, it's unhealthy, there are preservatives and all of that. So number one, Burger King always claim flame grill, right? And they actually went and sh did a whole campaign where they showed, I don't know how many stores, that actually caught fire because of flame grilling. Yeah? And then they went and turned all their competitors' ads into Burger King ads. Yeah? Using their flame grilled concept. They're talking about good food, real food. And if you took your 
app, there was an app that you had to download and you pointed it at a competitor ad, you got a coupon to go to Burger King. So you can't build such powerful campaigns when you don't have clear purpose and insight. Purposeful brands embed customer feedback. All this feedback on fast food is bad, it is bad for you, it is unhealthy, it is full of preservatives. I think the latest Burger King move where they have done a campaign using what is called the moldy burger. I don't know if anyone has seen it. So, does anyone work for Unilever here before I start? Oh, Crispin used to work for them, let me be careful. Have you guys ever left Blue Band out in the open for like a year? Does it mold? Does it mold? It doesn't. It's a fact, yeah? Right? Butter? Depends on the brand of butter you buy. But <laughs> if it is a real butter brand, <laughs> butter molds within a day and a half, two days. So apparently the fast food burgers were not moldy. You can imagine what they were stuffed with to preserve them. So Burger King have removed, I don't know how many, they said, is it over a thousand? I can't remember how many preservatives they have actually removed from their food. And they made a public claim about it. Because they said, we're getting this feedback, we have taken out all our preservatives. And they gave proof when they left out a Whopper, which is their core burger, and recorded it molding. Would you do that with your brand? Yeah, you're the only real one, by the way. Right? So they have taken their feedback. Their sales are up 14% in these difficult times. I always say purpose is good for business. Finally, what I'd like to say, not finally, almost finally, is purpose must always stay relevant. Now let me bring you closer to my world. Um, I took over beer, marketing for beer for EABL in 2018. And Tasca is our flagship brand. Everybody loves Tasca. Year by year, fewer and fewer people want to have a Tasca. Right? And that's a fact. Equity was collapsing. We had been declining for years. Um, and we headed into our 100-year celebration with a brand which had become dusty. So what we did as a team, sat down, refreshed the purpose. And this is not something that you do consistently. It's not something that you do always. But when you realize your brand is faltering, you have to go back to its roots and find out if it's still connecting. Purpose must always stay relevant. And what we realized is we had strayed from the foundation of what Tasca was built for. Tasca was always the best Kenyan you could find, always cheering Kenyans, always supporting Kenyan sport, always supporting Kenyan music. And over time, we had strayed away from that. So we call it a brand refresh, but it wasn't. It was actually going back to the roots. So we repositioned the brand and launched the Kenya Milele campaign. Kenya Milele basically means that Tasca is here to enable every Kenyan to stand tall. So Tasca will always be that person, that brand, that's propping up Kenyan talent, be it music, be it sport, yeah? And enabling us to celebrate. And that's how we crafted the Team Kenya campaign and said, let's support our athletes. It was a tricky call because Olympics were almost being called off. It was expensive at a time when we were not making money. Um, and again, we went back and supported Kenyan artists. In October of last year, Kenyan artists had not worked for, I think, 12 months. Guys were broke. And we're still in the height of COVID, but we're like, we think we can do Oktoberfest. So much as we all wanted to go out and have a good time, we also needed to get the artists to go out and start to earn money again. And that is living your purpose in a modern and fresh way. Yeah? So instead of saying Kenya Milele is about the landscapes of Kenya, the difference we made is saying that Kenya Milele is about the people of Kenya, bringing them together and supporting them. I'm very happy to say that from February, we are seeing Tasca starting to hit its commercial performance targets, right? If you're clear about your purpose, you live it every day in every way. It is good for business. 
And finally, from my case study examples, I would like to talk about Chrome Vodka, which is a brand that is very close to my heart. It is actually my claim to fame from a marketing perspective. Um, and you know, in 2015, what we call F15, we were only selling 5,000 cases of Chrome Vodka a year. And the opportunity that the team had, had, had identified, that's the innovation team, was around the fact that if you look at young Kenyans, right, they don't have a lot of opportunities to practice their craft. They don't have, jobs are not the way they used to be. So we're like, how do we help guys understand the potential of now? And that you can harness your potential today and become bigger than you ever thought you could be, but you have to start now. And that's when we partnered with Saudi Soul. And the first campaign we crafted for Chrome was Dream Big, Be Bigger. And the reason that this is important from a purpose perspective is once we were clear who Chrome Vodka was talking to, why it was important to talk to them, we could then build a whole marketing campaign around that. Partnering with Saudi Soul, who are in music, they were not as big then as they are now. I don't think we can afford them now. But it was fantastic for the brand. What we use the Chrome Vodka platform for, we actually went around the country bringing live music closer to young Kenyans, putting young Kenyans on the stage, young Kenyans that would never have gotten an opportunity. I always say this, your average concert is in Nairobi and you have to pay 2,000 bob, isn't it? And that's to be in the word to section, right? Not VIP is 8K, 10K. Yeah. So if you have to go for a concert, you want to enjoy yourself, 2,000 bob, then you need to buy a drink, you're saying, easy, easy, if you're two of you, 6,000. Who has that money? Right? And then the artists that you'll have to get for such events are also very expensive. So what we went in, we went around the country. We could only afford one big headliner, that was Saudi Soul. We looked for local MCs that we could put on the stage. Do you hear this guy called Oga Obina on Kiss Now? Do you know where we started with him? Chrome Vodka 2016. He was the MC for our concerts. People like Nyboy, I remember the first Chrome Vodka concert, guys are like, put Nyboy. I'm like, who is Nyboy? Because they were young upcoming artists. And with time, Chrome Vodka has become known as the brand that brings music to people, that actually supports Kenyan music, musicians. Over time, over the last few years, the purpose has remained the same, but the execution of the brand has morphed. The campaign that we are running right now for Chrome, which is Street Philosophia, I think is absolutely brilliant. I'm saying that because it's not my work, I'm not blowing my own horn. Street Philosophia basically is about giving guys, showing guys the pride they have in where they live. You know, people think that you can only be proud of where you live if you live in Karen and Kitisuru. Yeah, that's why some guys, you live in the Ndegua, but you say you live in Rundaview. Right? What is fascinating about the hood is that we have recordings of these people. Where do you live? I live in Huruma. Are you proud of it? Absolutely, yes. What are you? Every hood has the thing you're proud of. Whether it's the Nganyas, whether it's the Mutura guy, right? Whether it's the fact that you're always there for each other. So, again, Chrome Vodka is telling the story of where you come from and shining the light on how that is a beautiful thing. So purpose allows us to story tell. And if you look at traditional African society, that is how lessons were told. Yeah? So if I'm to recap, purpose must always be authentic. It doesn't necessarily have to be popular. It must be connected to what your customers are going through. It must always stay relevant. And it must allow you to story tell. And purpose is good for business. Remember, it gives you, you can command a premium if you don't take away anything from this presentation, please remember the two shoes and understand what purpose can do to transform your business. 
So when we look at today's brands, and especially I look at Kenya, and how we are running our brands and communicating, it can't just be about selling things. It can't be about new look, same, great, taste. And buy one, get one free, and if you hire Bahati, and uh, Namarua sings a song, your brand will sell. Right? That is what is called promotions, not marketing. And for marketing to be successful, you must have a clear purpose. You must stand for something, and you, might, you must live it unashamedly, unapologetically through the time. Remember brands like Equity. Yeah? Remember brands like Dove and Tasca that has now been here 100 years and is celebrating 100 years because of supporting Kenya and Kenyan talent. Newcomers like Chrome Vodka that is now, Chrome is the most loved spirit brand in Kenya and it is our number two brand. If I told you how big it is, you'll be shocked. Yep. So purpose is good for business. Thank you very much.